Welcome back. So, in the last few classes we have been looking at the haptic system. We looked at the haptic system is a combination of sensory system and the motor systems together. In the previous class we looked at the psychophysics of the perception and uh, touch specifically. Today we are going to look at uh, sensory part of the haptics specifically we are going to focus on tactile part of the haptics. Sensory part also we have seen in the last class it has the four modality tactile system, kinesthetic system, thermal system and the pain systems right. We are going to focus on the tactile systems in today's class we will look at the, the kinesthetic system in the next class. Let me start with a basic question how many of you seen skin? How many of you have seen the skin? The, yeah, the, the question seems to be uh, no irrelevant right or is uh, trivial is not it? Skin of animals? No, no, no it is uh, your skin have you seen your skin? That is a question I am uh, I am asking you. So, the question seems to be trivial, but it is not trivial. Do we know what is our skin? So, apparently now what you are seeing is not the skin which we are going to see. Okay, skin is beneath the outer skin. Okay, we will see it. So, essentially we are going to talk about uh, 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 yeah, entire process of uh, when touch happens on the skin, what are the things happening in the uh, central nervous system and then what happens until the brain system. So, for example, here we are talking about the fingertip when fingertip touches something what is happening in the fingertip, how the signal or stimulus is converted into electrical uh, impulses and then how it is conveyed to the uh, uh, central nervous system and what are the different processes happening until the nervous system is what we are going to see today. Okay. We will start with the, the answer to the our question, how we seen your skin. Okay. Apparently, you may not have seen it unless you are a doctor where you do the you know surgery. Our skin is about uh, uh, about a 100 micron beneath the apparent cover. So, what you are seeing outside is actually a dead layer of your skin that is not your skin at all it is called the epidermis. The dermis the skin which is over the skin the cover is what you are uh, uh, what is what you are seeing it. The real skin is buried underneath about 100 microns below that is called the dermis that is a uh, Greek or uh, Latin name in it. So, this part is the skin. Okay. The skin is where there are lot of sensors over there. So, we are going to see specifically some four different sensors this is the uh, Merkel disc is one of the sensors Merkel disc skins are there over here. So, you have seen your uh, fingerprints under the fingerprints there are ridges what you are this uh, along uh, uh, zoomed is this uh, the fingerprint ridges under the ridges there are sensors there very small sensors that is called the Merkel discs or this Merkel is named after a scientist who has invented that in uh, about uh, 150 years ago it is a German scientist it is called a Merkel disc. And then there is other Meissner corpuscles again between this ridges there is another sensor Meissner's corpuscle we are going to see the details of this and then uh, there are uh, Ruffini organs and then Pisner's organs. Okay. So, you can see that this sensors are embedded in different levels different depth of the our skin. Okay. So, the Merkel and Meissner you can see that it is in the top layer of the, the skin. The Pacini and Ruffini they are in the bottom layer of the skin they are a little deeper they are not at the surface level. By the way do we know why we have the fingerprints? 
unique identification ok is that the reason uh, fingerprints are unique but why we have this fingerprints grip ok all right is there any other answers to hold the sensors to hold the sensors objects that is what a grip is talking about there are some researchers recently they looked into the fingerprints why we have the fingerprints some people say that uh, the fingerprints enlarges the any stimulus amplifies the stimulus so that the sensors here actually now uh, gets a better signal signal to noise ratio is improved or whatever it is but still it is inconclusive why we have the fingerprints you can go back and look at the literatures still scientists do not have clear cut idea why we have the fingerprints ok one of you can become a scientist in uh, haptics and then uh, you know, tell a reason confirm reason that this is the reason we have fingerprints it is still a open ended research question ok. So, uh, this numbers is this names and uh, uh, the numbers we will have to you know, uh, get familiar with we are going to use it again and again throughout the course ok. They are also named as now SA 1, SA 2, RA 1, RA 2, SA 1 is for uh, slow adapting they are going to see the reasons for or, uh, this naming slow adapting this is uh, slow adapting 1, this is slow adapting 1, this is a slow adapting 2, this is a rapidly adapting. See why it is called slow adapting, why it is called rapidly adapting, we will uh, look at it in uh, different details. So, below the dermis part of it, I told you this is the real skin, ok. Below the dermis part of it, there is uh, also called the hyperthermis. dermis where there is a lot of fats and everything is there. This is about you know 1 mm that is all right and uh, there, there are a lot of fats over here. This is a representation of the skin in your fingertip. If you take a small section of the fing, uh, skin from any other parts of the body it is going to be entirely different ok. The thickness of this outer layer is going to be different, the thickness of the dermis layer is going to be different. Okay. and then the hypodermis layer also is going to be different ok. So, the cross section is varied throughout the, the body why should it be why cannot it be the same everywhere. The skin gets adapted to depending upon what is required ok because we are going to end up touching many objects very regularly very often ok. So, the nature has put up lot of sensors over here. At the back of uh, our uh, uh, back we do not need lot of uh, sensors, we do not use the, our back to touch many of the objects. So, we do not need many sensors at all. So, the skin cross section is vastly different ok that is one reason and um, uh, yes uh, when we uh, take bath what happens is this outer layer this is the epidermis, we shed off the layers when we take bath the, the dead cells are washed away that is one of the reasons we have to take bath very regularly ok. Uh, you know uh, one of the main reasons of our skin is not only to protect, but also to cool our body ok. So, when you take bath the body gets cooled out. This sort of cooling the body is a secondary purpose of for organ. Every organ has a secondary purpose. So, eyes is only for seeing that is a primary purpose, it has a secondary purpose. Liver has uh, one primary purpose and secondary purpose. For many of the organs, we have not even found out what is the secondary purpose. Okay. So, researchers are still looking at uh, now, what are the secondary purposes? So, many of the organs we have, we only know what is the primary purpose. Okay. According to our Indian literature, the skin is looked at uh, now in much more deep. So, whatever I have presented now is the 
uh, uh, is understanding of the modern science as of today. But our system, there is a Indian medical system called Ayurveda, how many of you heard about it, right? Ayurveda, Siddha in southern part of it, specifically in Tamil Nadu and Kerala, there is a system called Siddha medical system and there is a Verma medical system. There, the skin is looked at uh, no, in much more details and uh, the top layer itself is divided into seven more layers. Okay. Epidermis itself is divided into seven more layers and then each of the layer is connected to Panchapudas, Panchapuda rotor. So, that is all now typical uh, Ayurveda science which we will not get into details, but I just want you to know remember that our Indian science has much more details than the modern science. We will not go into the Indian science about it, uh, this course concerns only the modern science, but any of you are interested you can get into the Indian science and then look at maybe some of our uh, findings in the Indian science could be you know, uh, uh, could be elucidating some details in the modern science. Okay. All right. So, this uh, copper school, this uh, mechanoreceptor, we call all these things all mechanoreceptors specifically cutaneous and subcutaneous mechanoreceptors. Okay. So, uh, these are the uh, different names, not only uh, the four mechanoreceptors what we have seen Meissner, Merkel and Pacini, Ruffini. There are also another mechanoreceptors for example, this is also now uh, uh, endings. If you look at your air loops, okay, air loops does not have any of this four mechanoreceptors, does not have any of this uh, sensors, but still we find it uh, now sensing our touch. I am using the pen, if you use your finger probably the, the sensors in your finger may be sensing the forces, right. If you use your pen or a pencil and then try to stroke your ears, you can see that you still get a sense of touch. How is it? There are very small nerve endings over there, and the nerve endings senses the touch. Okay, these are all specialized re receptors, whereas the nerve ending is a very basic receptors. Okay, are you aware that uh, now uh, the blood vessels has the sensors? Entire blood vessels, even a minute blood vessels has the sensors, mechanoreceptors. Okay. So, essentially entire body is full of mechanoreceptors, entire body is full of this tactile receptors, touches your body sense, it is called a somato sense. Have you heard about somato sense, somato sense? Somato means body, bodily senses, the entire body is made up of the touch sense, uh, other senses are just located in certain you know, uh, parts of the body. It is all you know, restricted to certain anatomy, whereas the somato sense, the touch sense is there throughout the body. Okay. So, when uh, you and I were in the mother's womb, the first sense developed is the touch sense, that is a body sense, that is a throughout the sense. Only then other senses started developing. That is one of the reasons we call touch sense as a fundamental sense, without the touch sense other sense cannot be developed at all. Okay. So, uh, we will find the details of this uh, sense in the coming days. So, each of the sensors are also having a different uh, now, now fibers we will see, but the modalities is what is uh, what is it is sensing. Each sensor is a specialized sensor, it is specializing for certain stimulus energy. Okay. So, for example, Meissner if you look at it, it is sensing the you know, stroking, stroking is a very slow uh, uh, movement and then fluttering is a very slow vibrations. Okay. Merkel is uh, sensing the pressure and the texture, your shirt is applying a certain pressure on your skin and that is actually felt by Merkel. You may not you know, realize it all the time, but uh, when you start giving attention you can see that the, the shirt is applying a certain pressure on your uh, uh, body that is sensed by the Merkel receptors. Pacini is sensing the vibration 
from uh, a few hertz to 1000 hertz it is sensing the vibration. Ruffini endings it is all sensing the skin stretch when the blood vessels is uh, now increasing in the volume it gets stretched that is sensed by the, the Ruffini endings. Okay. There are other sense also, but what we are going to do is we will focus only on this four things. Whenever we say mechanoreceptors, we will remember this Meissner, Merkel, Pacini and Ruffini endings. Okay. People have looked at the uh, cross sections of each of the sensors and then uh, given you the, uh, the, the diagram of these things. So, uh, if you look at the Ruffini disc, it is something like this. It is like a you know, uh, body where uh, there are uh, cross sections of, uh, uh, of, of different uh, endings are going over here. Okay. This is our Ruffini disc or this is the Pacini. Pacini is the one which is sensing the uh, your vibration. And, uh, all your stomach has this Pacini receptors. It is sensing these slow movements to you now very frequency uh, high movements. You can see that there are layers, layers and layers of uh, you know, tissues around the sensor and these are all very important. We are going to see how each of the sensor is actually transducting the stimulus to the electrical impulses. You can see that at, at uh, one of the recent port photographs of our Pacini corpuscles. Okay. You can see it is like almost like a, no, uh, does it look like a, what, which one? Beans, okay, or a grapes or beans, okay. It is a, a bunch of grapes sitting together, right. It is a very zoomed version of it and each one is about, um, uh, less than uh, you no know, 200 micron. Okay, there are all you know bunches of the of this uh, uh, receptors are over here. By the way, this uh, receptors research has started 300 years ago, not recent. Okay, people have been looking into this receptors for last 300 years, but still, this there is so much of of information which is not there. So, some of you I hope will become a researchers and uh, elucidate some of the missing information. Okay. So, all these four receptors even before coming to I want to show you this. Okay. So, uh, we are talking about uh, two kinds of receptors superficial that is on the surface level they are Merkel and uh, Meissner. Let me pick up a different color pen. Merkel and Meissner. There are superficial skin receptors. There are deeper skin receptors. They are Ruffini and uh, Pacini. All these names you will get familiar with that. So we are going to call a uh, slow adaptive sensors as one in the super skin, superficial in the skin, and another one in the deep in the skin. These two are slow adaptive. This is called the SA1, this is called the SA2 and then rapidly adaptive this is called the RA1, this is called the RA2. Okay. So, you can see that uh, in this diagram uh, Meissner and uh, Meissner and uh, Merkel both are in the superficial region and then Pacini and Ruffini they are all in the and the uh, deeper in the skin. Okay. So, why is it called slow adaptive, why is it called uh, rapidly adapt adaptive? This concept is very important for understanding the entire uh, neuroscience part of the haptics. So, pay attention. Suppose if you give a stimulus of this region, a ramp stimulation, ramp and hole that is what it is called right. Let us say we give this stimulus to each of these receptors. What happens? Let us look at over here. Okay. So, in uh, Meissner, if you look at this uh, ramp, 
what happens is only when there is a change there is this electrical impulses all these receptors convert stimulus into electrical impulses okay this let us say this is the output of each of the receptors and these are all all uh, electrical uh, impulses uh, uh, let us call that as a um, uh, 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 spike spikes electrical spikes okay so you can see that whenever there is a change in the stimulus there is a uh, spikes when there it is maintaining when you are holding the ramp and hold there is no spikes at all okay again when there is a change there is one more spike over here so what is actually happening in is it adapts to the the st stimulus only when there is a change it is actually uh, uh, generating the impulse okay it's like a differential sensor right if you look at uh, the other one that's a merkel for the same ramp you can see that when there is a change there is more spike when there is no change there are lesser spikes so unlike the earlier one it is not completely stopping the spikes this is called the slow adaptive sa1 this is called the rapidly adaptive ra1 okay similarly if you look at the pasini again whenever there is a change alone it is there are spikes whenever there are uh, uh, no change there are no uh, spikes at all this is called the um, this is called the uh, ra2 and this is called the sa2 the the last one is the the ruffini endings again you can see that there are more spiking in when there is a change there are less spiking when there is no change so this classification of the receptors into slowly adaptive and rapidly adaptive is very important as far as the, the neuroscience aspect of haptics is concerned okay so uh, uh, again it is uh, explained in this uh, uh, stimulus spike train uh, this is uh, this is for the the more four of uh, four receptors it's uh, given over here okay now instead of changing the instead of having a ramp and hold we can give a no, sinusoidal input how would it how would the receptors respond to the sinusoidal input so uh, that is again and uh, can be looked at but uh, ramp and hold gives you an idea about what is slow adaptive what is uh, rapidly adaptive okay and each of these receptors has uh, uh, <coughs> has a, a property called receptive field they are responsible they will respond when the stimulus is present within certain field that is called the receptive field okay each sensor has a different different receptive field and knowing what receptive field and uh, for what mechano receptor is very important specifically you logically if there are uh, superficial skin the receptive field could be very very less so if there are uh, superficial skin then their receptive field is could be within this region it could sense whenever there is a stimulus similarly here also the receptive field can be very small but when there is a deeper sensor its receptive field has to be very big right so whenever there is a signal anywhere here this sensor will respond to it similarly this also it will have a different uh, receptive field so the concept of receptive field is another important uh, concept you need to learn so that is what is uh, shown over here this is a superficial uh, uh, sensors uh, these are all slowly adaptive micro receptors uh, you can see that merkel has receptive fields this uh, purple color marked is the receptive for field for each of this uh, Merkel sensors and uh, for uh, Ruffini you can see that since it is a deeper receptor the, the receptive field is actually bigger larger right. Similarly rapidly adapting if you look at it and these are the Meissner 
corpuscles which are superficial it can you can see that the receptive field is very small. And for the Pacini you can see that it is a deep sensor rapidly adapting and then receptive field is, is very very large. Okay. Depending upon the receptive field whether it is superficial or deeper the number of sensors also is different. The number of sensors each of the sensors in uh, is different for different parts of the body again it depends upon the requirement. Okay. So, uh, uh, in some places where Pacini will be more in some other site uh, uh, anatomical site right, um, uh, Merkel will be more it depends upon the requirement it is highly adaptive when you when you even your uh, skin requires certain particular stimulus as uh, uh, adaptation then the, the number of particular sensors grow up increases or decreases nothing is constant. Okay, the same information is uh, shown over here uh, slow adaptive SA1 and SA2 you can see that uh, uh, the uh, spike trains are increasing decreasing according to the requirement whereas the uh, rapidly adapting in some literature it will be also called the fast adaptive rapidly adaptive fast adaptive. So, do not get uh, uh, mixed up FA1 and FA2 you can see the spike trains are getting adapted to it okay. and this is shown the, uh, uh, the threshold and in this graph is not the threshold it is actually it is showing the receptive field field right. So, uh, the receptive field is shown in a graph over like this the y axis is the threshold in the last class we saw the concept of threshold which is the fundamental for uh, psychophysics right. So, what is the minimum pressure required for the sensor to respond that is the threshold right. So, if the stimulus is within this uh, particular uh, uh, range say let us say this is the uh, center of the fast adaptive uh, uh, receptor then and uh, then uh, the threshold required for the stimulus to make the mechanoreceptor respond is actually very small. If it is more then it requires very high threshold. Okay. Similarly, uh, this is the FA2 fast adaptive uh, adapting 2 this is the Ruffini and this is the Pacini. You can see that uh, uh, this is a receptive field and uh, the distance and required or the threshold required uh, with the distance is almost almost constant for the uh, FA2 or RA2. This receptors also encodes the shape. So, in the earlier slides what we saw that the receptors encodes the stimulus right. So, they also encode the shape of the object. For example, if I have a ellipsoid objects like this let us say this is in 0 degree there is a ellipsoid object in 90 degree the responses from this receptors is actually now capturing the shape of the objects. So, these are all this dot 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 represents the uh, responses from a single fiber each of these fibers imagine that each of the, the neuroscientists actually neurophysiologists they cut open the finger attach the electrodes to each of this uh, receptors and then look at how the electrical impulses are coming out and that is what recorded over here. Each dot represents the presence of the electrical impulses. So, you can see that this responses from each of this receptors is actually encoding the shape of the object. Right? So, uh, in the right side of the picture you can see that if this is the stimulation the dots are you know, um, the distance is of 14 and mm within this stage. You can see that the stimulations in uh, area is actually slowly increasing. You can see how FA1 and FA2 is actually responding. Okay. Again, it captures the, the stimulation uh, location and the intensity of it. 
you can see that as the intensity of the stimulation say increases this uh, more and more receptors also increases. Okay. This are only F A 1 and F A 2 you can see that at the uh, dot diagram for each of these receptors actually is growing bigger that shows that at it captures the location as well as the, the shapes. Uh, uh, again if you look at uh, a, an, a stimulus which is varying in a, in a in the shape let us say it is uh, uh, it is a wavy the waviness is more initially as we go the waviness is increasing okay. waviness is uh, no, lesser over here the frequency is lesser and uh, as we go the waviness increasing as it increases you can see that impulses responses from the single fibers is also increasing as the waviness increases the response is also increasing it is capturing the shape that is what is meant over here. The curvature of an object for example, if you have the spherical object or cylindrical object now as the curvature increases let us say uh, curvature we have we are increasing like this more and more curvatures and how the response is changing over here. You can see the linear relation between the curvature as well as to the responses. Okay. So, the mechanical receptors encodes shape, curvature, you know, waviness, location there are more so many things. At the end of this class we are going to see what are the different uh, uh, properties of the stimulus this mechanical receptors are capturing. This is again and uh, how SA1 is uh, uh, capturing the responses re <coughs> with respect to the time. This is for uh, uh, pressure, different pressure how the SA1 is the same SA1 this graph as well as this graph. It is responding to pressure or uh, force, but two different sites. When the stimulus is over here, over here how is the response? You can see that at, uh, at uh, 0.8 Newton it is like this is 1.4 Newton is like this and then 2 Newton it is like this slightly different how this force response is actually changing depends upon the location. This is how the mechanical receptors captures the, the changes in the uh, location. This is a SA2 the same thing uh, this is uh, capturing the force this is a input uh, force ramp and hole and uh, this are the responses from diff different sites you can see how it is changing over here. Pacini receptors as you know it is uh, a rapidly adapting receptor. So, how does it rapidly adapting it ok yeah, sensor. So, one of the very nice thing uh, to put it very simply it is like uh, the Pacini receptor has a onion like structure let me put it as a onion like structure. If you cut open an onion you can see the, the layers of uh, layers and layers. So, the layers are tissues in between the tissues there are liquids filled over here. Okay. So, you can see that uh, for example, it is just given two layers alone okay. in between the liquid is shown uh, here it is the, the uh, uh, light yellow color this is a, a red color okay. just to show you that there are liquid layers. So, when you apply when the stimulus is applied you can see that each layer is sliding over the other layer because there is a fluid field in between ok. Unless you rapidly apply the stimulus is rapid enough so that the viscosity of the liquid does not allow the outer layer to slip with the inner layer the, the stimulus will not reach the, the core of the, the receptor this is the core unless the stimulus reaches the core it is not going to generate electrical impulses ok. So, for our, uh, the, the, the structure onion structure of the person in such a way that below a certain frequency of the stimulus it will filter out it will not let the stimulus reach the, the inner neural core, core 
only if it reaches a beyond certain frequency, this will reach the, uh, the innermost uh, neural core. Then once it reaches the innermost neural core, it will start generating the, the impulses. Okay. So, uh, there are Pacinian copper skulls with uh, 100 layers, there are Pacinian copper skulls with uh, 2 layers, again it depends upon the sites. Okay. How much is each of the layer thickness? Okay. Uh, our, uh, yeah, our, uh, our lab has modeled each of these layers and from one layer to next layer, how the signal is actually uh, uh, transducted. Okay. So, the uh, entire thing is actually modeled. Okay. There are anatomical data is available, this anatomical data as, uh, as, um, uh, using the anatomical data, we have accurately modeled uh, the Pacinian receptors. Okay. So, once the stimulus reaches the core, then it starts generating the electrical impulses. So, one of our uh, uh, current PhD student is uh, developing in, uh, further models and uh, simulation of this Pacinian uh, copper skulls, our TA. He is uh, looking at uh, now distribution of all the sensors, how it is actually encoding the shapes or other uh, information from our stimulus. Okay. And this Pacinian copper skull has uh, certain and uh, 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 very unique uh, responses. For example, if you increase the frequency of the stimulus, basically tapping, increase the frequency of the stimulus, how much is the minimum amplitude needed for this Pacinian res uh, copper skull to respond? That is plotted in the y axis, amplitude that is basically a threshold, right? Minimum amplitude is required. So, that is plotted over here. At very low frequency, this is in the log scale, very low frequency, the amplitude required is about uh, 20 micron, it is in the you know, decibel uh, unit it is given. You can see that as the frequency increases, it is the uh, threshold required is actually reduces. You have your cell phones, the cell phone has a vibrator, when you hold your cell phone in your hand, what is actually being sensed is by the Pacinian receptors. Okay. If your cell phone vibrator is having lesser frequency, then your cell phone vibrator has to amplify, uh, has to have an amplitude which is, which is much more over. If the same cell phone vibrator has a frequency which is at this range, then the amplitude required for your hands to sense is very less. Okay. This frequency is about uh, 250 hertz. Okay. And uh, as you increase it, increase the frequency, it again increases, it is not uh, staying over here. As you increase the frequency about 250 hertz, the amplitude increases and it reaches very high. At a very high frequency, you need much more threshold for you to respond. So, 250 hertz, if you want very good uh, vibration sensation, then you will have to operate at uh, now 250 hertz. Okay. And not only Pacinian response to this particular uh, vibration, there are others also, for example, the other colored graphs also there, they are also responding to it. Okay. But uh, you can say this is almost constant, let us say SA1, this also is almost constant, this is, it, uh, this is SA2 and this is uh, RA2, RA1, this is uh, RA1 what this is one is the RA2. So, every sensor responds to the stimulus, but one sensor is specialized into it. Okay. It is not that uh, no, uh, only one sensor will respond to a particular stimulus, it will respond, but you know, only one is specialized into it. This you need to you know, keep it in mind. And uh, uh, we have measured this responses of this threshold beyond 250 hertz until 3000 hertz we have measured and we found that the uh, threshold needed at 3000 hertz is very, very high. 
So, this is the first time um, uh, we have measured uh, first time a yeah, frequency of 3000 hertz is reported for uh, no, our uh, Persian mechanical receptors are uh, reporting the threshold of uh, our Persian receptors. So, uh, the same graph is mentioned over here you can see that this is about uh, 250 hertz and uh, uh, this also plots different uh, area for different area the receptors responds differently. This is the amplitude displacement is given over here and this receptors as I mentioned earlier it has different distributions throughout the body. Okay. So, how do we measure how much is, how much is the uh, how is the distribution of the sensors in our body that is a very simple measurement this measurement is called the two point threshold measurement two point threshold means suppose if I give you two stimulus how will you be perceiving this two different uh, locations yes, but only if this distance is <coughs> greater than some di some distance d should be greater than two point threshold if it is below the two point threshold basically you have uh, two two different sensors if the stimulus is uh, uh, no lesser than this two different sensors this is a let us say s1 and s2 if the stimulus is distance is lesser than this sensor's distance then you will not feel that as two different stimulus you will feel as only one stimulus okay that threshold is called the two point threshold threshold right so basically take a small campus whatever you have used in your geometry box in your schools now uh, separate the prongs of the uh, compass and put it on your skin and uh, keep varying the distances at which distance you feel two points okay that is what plotted for different sites over here you can see that for the fingers it is very very small the y axis it is mentioned as uh, mm it is about you know 2 mm or 3 mm it, the finger even more finer okay for the palm it is about uh, 10 mm you can see that the highest is in your cough you know how much is it it is uh, 4.5 centimeters two different points below 4.5 centimeters cannot be perceived in your cough muscles okay that is because the distribution of the sensors are very very less there whereas finger it is very high again it is a nature's choice wherever there is a much use now nature has put in more sensors wherever there is a less uh, nature is you know uh, optimizes okay because all the sensors have to be connected back to the the brain it doesn't need an unnecessary circuits going to the brain right that is one of the reasons mm -hmm.